What is up guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred, and welcome back to another Pokemon News Daily. A Pokemon show where I go over Pokemon news spamming across all the little Pokemon games from Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon to Pokemon Quest, Pokemon Go, and of course, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. And it is E3 season, so I missed a couple of the days worth of news because I was putting out my reaction videos and I'm pretty much done with the E3 coverage. Still got a little bit of video that are going to be trickling out but it's pretty much back to the regular schedule program as far as pokemon news coverage is concerned on this channel so without further ado let's get started now i want to start off with pokemon go news because pokemon go community day is this weekend and we got a confirmation of the move tarantatar is going to learn during the three hour window for community day and that move is smackdown not a huge surprise for some because data might Miners have found this move been put into the game around the same time the Charmander Community Day move was added. So we knew SmackDown was potentially coming to someone, and it kind of made sense once they announced that we're gonna have this Tarantatar special move. We kind of linked it together that it was gonna be SmackDown, and yeah. It's SmackDown. So like all Pokemon Go Community Days, is gonna be a three hour event on June 16th. Be sure to check the official Pokemon Go website. I'm gonna have it linked down in the description. Once you click the link, it's gonna send you to the correct time zone that Pokemon Go Community Day is gonna be happening for your region. So you can be sure to know exactly when to go out and start hunting for this Pokemon Go Community Day Pokemon. And be sure on the lookout for this guy the shiny Lavatar in Pokemon Go so you can get yourself a shiny Tarantatar potentially a shiny Tarantatar that knows the special move Smackdown now let's move on to some uh, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon news now we got the 50 battle points gift for anyone who participated in the Ultra nose hold bar competition and completed at least one battle the gift is 50 battle points it can be redeemed until July 31st so if you did participate, go ahead and pick up the battle points ASAP. Also remember that this weekend is the International Challenge of June. And by the time this video goes up, I think registrations should be closed. So for anyone that have registered for the International Challenge of June, make sure your team is ready because this weekend is going to be the weekend is going down from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You have 15 battles to do per day and a chance to actually earn champions championship points. I think this is pretty cool. Let me know in the comment section below if anybody is interested in these online competitions. Like always, I will be streaming it on my Instagram live feed or on here, depending on how everything's set up, if I actually have time to be in the studio. Also in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon news, we got confirmation on the very first Zero Aura distribution event. Confirming from a leaked image of Coral Coral, the first event is going to be taking place in Japan only for people who go see the Pokemon movie everyone's story from July 13th 2018 to September 30th 2018 no surprise there that is a Japan only event first don't pull out your pitchforks and torches it's gonna be okay we're gonna see zero or hit stateside probably when the movie itself comes stateside or worldwide for that matter. The Zero Aura event is only for the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon games, so people with the vanilla version of the games will be missing out. So Zero Aura will be coming at level 50 with the move set Plasma Fist, Thunder Punch, Close Combat, and Thunder. And it will also hold the Air Balloon. And it, again, it sounds pretty standard as far as releases are concerned. I think for the people outside of Japan, it's gonna be the same move set and you know with the same item but we will get more info once the movie is confirmed on a worldwide release which would mean this event will probably be confirmed on a worldwide release or maybe we will see that this event comes via Wi-Fi or GameStop depending on whatever the Pokemon company decides to do for this last event send off event for these ultra games and I do think it's going to be a while until we actually get this event worldwide I would say probably next year early next year <laughs> be on the lookout for zero or now before I go into the long list of updates 
updates that we've gotten for the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games. I just want to put this kind of in there because it's not a main series Pokemon game. Hell, it's not even a Pokemon game. It's Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, which was officially revealed at E3 2018 during the Nintendo Direct. And it was confirmed that a couple of Pokemon characters were going to be included in the game. Obviously, Pikachu, Mewtwo, Jigglypuff, the returning cast that is usually staples for the Smash Brothers series is going to be in the game. Odd ones out that they announced is going to be coming back. Pokemon Trainer, which was only in Brawl. And Pichu, which I believe was only in Melee, is also making an appearance in this game. And there is also a ton of Pokemon appearing inside of Pokeballs that can be used as items from Beware all the way to Selgaleo to Alolan Vulpix. It is it's a ton of Pokemon that has already been confirmed to be in this game. Now jumping into the meat and potatoes of everything that we've seen for the Let's Go games at E3 via the Nintendo Direct. I'm going to go over the Nintendo Direct stuff first because that was the first thing we did see we also seen stuff in the treehouse which again it's more information i'm gonna go over all of it right here so i'm gonna kind of just spit out everything that kind of happened and then kind of go through my ideas of what's going on at the end of it so the mythical pokemon mew will be available to all players for the pokemon let's go pikachu and let's go eevee games if they purchased the pokeball plus it has also been confirmed that the let's go pikachu and let's go eevee will have a special bundle that includes includes the Pokeball Plus inside for $100 US. The size of the Pokemon you capture alters the amount of experience you earn in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. The bigger the Pokemon, the better the experience. Like in Pokemon Go, you can use a Raspberry to make Pokemon easier to capture. All of your Pokemon in your party gain experience from you capturing a Pokemon. Pokemon, you also get bonus for the quality of your capture. The circle around the Pokemon in the wild indicates the Pokemon size. Red for bigger than normal, blue for smaller than normal, and if they don't have a, a circle, they're usually just normal size. The stat screen when you level up shows the stats and natures are still in place. CP is confirmed to work the same way it does in Pokemon Go. As an overall indicator of the combined stats of a Pokemon, you can swap out Pokemon following you at will. The new rival is a character called Trace. He's less than an adversary than your original rival. In order to access Pyrrhic City Gym, you need to have a water or grass type Pokemon on your team. To connect to other players over wireless internet connection, you need to share a a link code. This code is made out of various Pokemon, kind of like what we seen in the, the Pokemon Go raid battle lobby system. Poke Park replaces the Safari Zone in Future City. Multiple Go Parks can be saved. Pokemon in Go Park can then be captured by talking to the Pokemon, and these Pokemon cannot be sent back into your Pokemon Go account. The higher CP of a Pokemon in Pokemon Go the higher level it will be in the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games. Candies do exist in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. It boosts Pokemon stats. A quick candy, for example, boosts speed. It has also been confirmed that Mew cannot be sent from Pokemon Go to Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. So it can only be obtained through the Pokeball Plus. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that was a hell of an information dump. Shout outs to Joe Merrick and Cerebi.net for kind of gathering everything that we've seen during that Nintendo Treehouse event. I'm gonna have a link to the website in the description so you guys can check out the whole blog post. But yeah, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee is definitely interesting games as far as Pokemon is concerned. A big departure from the mainline games, I wanna say, 
but at the same time also having key features for the mainline games represented like the stats as a Pokemon and being able to battle. It's so many little touches that have integrated from Pokemon Go into this game that makes me question if it's going to be enjoyable for, you know, long time players like myself, but I think I'm going to love it and I actually have no doubt that I'm going to love it. I do love Pokemon Go. I do love Pokemon, the main series game. So them coming together and having a baby, it's, it's perfect for me. Add in the fact that I can play this two players with my wife or my daughter. I can have a Pokemon Go Plus attachment that connects to my Pokemon Go and I can use as a controller for the game. I think, again, that I'm going to love it. What's also cool is during the Treehouse demo, we did see different Pokemon appear in Viridian City Forest, including Bellsprout, Butterfree, and the starter Pokemon Bulbasaur. So this is a good sign right off the bat to see that one Bulbasaur can be caught in the wild because one, that would mean that potentially somewhere in the game you could catch Charmander and you could catch Squirtle too. But also that opens up the possibility of what this world is gonna be like because the Pokemon that we know from different areas could be switched up, could be taken out, could be put in different areas entirely. And that is something that I'm very interested to see and how that affects gameplay wise. What if early on in the game at Mount Moon, you are able to catch a Magmar per se, like if Magmar is there, for example, that will totally change up my team drastically because hell yeah, I want a Magmar early on in the game. I don't want to wait till I'm in Cinnabar Island to catch Magmar. That alone, that idea alone is just got me wondering what Pokemon is placed where and how is that going to affect my team and my gameplay and how I approach each gym leader when I'm going into battle. Also, I've seen a lot of people scared at this kind of requirement that you need to enter Pewter City Gym, that you need to have a water Pokemon and a grass Pokemon on your team in order to battle Brock. A lot of people are saying, well, this is bullshit. You should be allowed to, you know, brute force through it with, you know, Pikachu if you want it to. You shouldn't have a requirement to enter the gym. I think they're doing this requirement for multiple reasons. One, Brock in the anime is that type of guy he wanted red in the Pokemon Origins anyway. He wanted the trainer red to actually be aware of different Pokemon types and understand what Pokemon he needed to use in that battle. So it kind of makes sense to re kind of reflect that via the games. Also, it kind of opens up the door in like giving you a side mission before you can enter the gym and just power through and fight Brock. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. No, you giving blocking, not blocking me off, but giving me a mission to complete. Like, hey, yo, go out and catch a water type Pokemon. Now, I don't know if you played Pokemon Yellow ever. You don't really get a chance to get a water Pokemon before Pewter City Gym. I want if that has actually changed, if there's a water Pokemon maybe walking on land, hell, maybe you are able to see a Squirtle, you know, running out the water and then you can battle it. Again, possibilities are endless and I'm wondering if that's going to be the case here. Again, I do see people saying that this is kind of handholdy, that the Pokemon company wants you to play the game a certain way. Again, handholdy is the big word that I keep hearing with this kind of game mechanic or, or gym requirement. And I don't think so. I don't think so. Again, this is not confirmed to be in all gyms. So maybe this is just in the beginning. But even if it is in all gyms, again, I am 100% not worried that this is going to be an issue when you're playing this game. Because hell, you're going to want a grass Pokemon on your team. You're going to want a water Pokemon on your team. And especially if you know that you can catch them before going into the gym and train them up and bust Brock's ass, I think it's going to make the game a more enjoyable experience. But again, that's just me. Leave your thoughts about everything in the comment section below. Also, I see a lot of people complaining about the Pokeball Plus being the only way to obtain Mew in the game. Now, Mew is a special mythical Pokemon. And again, it's a special Pokemon. I know it's unfair to kind of paywall Mew off to trainers who potentially can't afford to go get the Pokeball Plus. Hell, the Pokeball Plus by itself is $50. 
$10 less than up buying a brand new copy of the game. So I understand your pain. I'm out here in Switzerland. So me looking for Pokemon Go Plus, I'm probably going to pay $100 by itself for one of those babies. And that's again, without the game. <laughs> so I'm going to be kind of in a sore spot in my wallet. So I do understand. I do feel people who are like, oh my God, why are they pay walling meal behind a device? And again, that's because they want you to experience Pokemon. Come on, let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee in the best way possible. That best way is obviously with the Pokeball peripheral. Now, again, I'm not 100%, you know, down with the, the evil plot movement of having Mew only accessible through that means. I really hope a couple of months down the line as DLC, they release Mew publicly to everyone. Or maybe they allow Mew to be a, you know, DLC, you know, for a dollar or something on the eShop. Or maybe, you know, they lift the ban and allow Mew to be accessed through Pokemon Go. Because I do believe the way that you can access Mew and Pokemon Go is pretty unique and it will be pretty cool if you could bring that over to let's go pikachu let's go eevee i do understand why they have that lock and that's obviously because the way you get me in pokemon go it's a whole quest behind it it will kind of defeat the purpose if you just did the quest farmed it out and just dropped me into the game and again that choice should be your choice yes but i kind of understand why they you know said no if you want Mew, you have to get the Pokeball Plus. I know that's kind of harsh, but let me know what you think about all the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee news in the comment section below. Like always, guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred on Instagram and Twitter. You guys can bring the conversation there. I'm the American Gamer in Switzerland right here on YouTube. And yes, I'm going to be doing a ton of these Pokemon News Daily videos, hence why it's called Pokemon News Daily. So the best way to catch them all is with a subscription. So please hit that subscribe button also hit the like button it does help me out a ton as far as growing the channel is concerned ring that bell ding if you want to be notified on the next time i drop a video peace i'm gonna see you guys tomorrow for pokemon news daily